Rabbanit Leah Sarna and Rabbi David Walkenfeld. Shalom and welcome to the Straw Hat. We're the official podcast of Anshe Shalom B'nai Israel Congregation, an Orthodox synagogue in the beautiful Lakeview neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. We are recording this podcast on Monday morning, just one day after we discovered incendiary devices on the premises of the synagogue, and uh, just a few days before we are going to gather for our summer soiree in spring. We feel that if our synagogue is worth attacking, then it's definitely also worth celebrating. And so in this episode, we'll have first a conversation between the two of us about why we love the synagogue and what's so special about this place. Then we'll have uh, a message from our congressman, Congressman Quigley. Um, he came by to show some support, and we did a little recording with him. And lastly, we'll round it out with a conversation with Erica Phillips, our vice president for Ways and Means, and she'll be telling us a little bit about the upcoming soiree. So I wanted to take this chance to ask you, what does it mean to love a shul? It's a beautiful question. And I think it's something that intuitively so many of our members know, people who who show up here and, and fall in love with it. And you ask people, you know, on this podcast, we often ask people, why, why, how'd you come here? Why, why, do you, why do you still come here? And, and the answers are answers of love, that you love the community, you love the space, you love the activities that go on here. You feel like um, religion and particularly our version of it, um, orthodoxy that's practiced in this space speaks to you and adds something to your to your life. But it's actually not just about personal, private practice. You know, one could be a Jew on a desert island. Um, the Torah doesn't recommend it. Um, and um, there's something so powerful about practicing Judaism in community with other people and in a shul. And the way I, I kind of see it is that, um, you know, Judaism pervades kind of every element of our lives from the first words we say up when we wake up in the morning and how we tie our shoes to the last words we say when we go to sleep at night. Um, and, and kind of everything in between, every interaction we have with people is guided by by Jewish values, that even even the way, you know, even the way we go to the bathroom, kind of guided by halakha. And yet, so where does the synagogue come into that, right? Um, but I think the synagogue is the place where we exercise the elements of Judaism that require community and require others. So community in the sense that we need a minyan in order to say certain parts of tefillah, or we need experts in order to accomplish certain Jewish ritual things. Um, we need to come together in order to study Torah. You know, it's one thing to study Torah by yourself. That there's, there's space for that, of course. But to learn Torah from other people, because our Torah is is a mesorah. It's a, it's a tradition that gets passed down. How does it get passed down unless you have relationships with other people? people who are passing it down to you. And our Torah is learned with with fellowship, with friends who challenge you and, and encourage you to, to keep learning and to learn better and to think better. Um, and so those all require gathering. And then also, community is a place to exercise um, mitzvot ben adam um, mitzvot that are between people, that enables us to practice hospitality, enables us to practice chasad, uh, loving kindness, all of the, all of the um, mitzvot um, that are kind of subsidiaries of uh, of loving your fellow as yourself, like showing up for people when they're mourning, uh, celebrating with people in their highs. We named a baby in Shul this morning, um, and and we had the opportunity to kind of sing Simitov Mazazov with a new father. Um, that that happens at Shul for a reason because Jews gather for for the highs and for the lows and for um, creating holy spaces in and amongst each other. I, I want to ask a harder question. Please. Why do you love this shul? Why do I love this shul? I love this shul. So I've I've been here since um, my contract started in July. Um, and actually, I took the job because I, I had a sense already that I would love. I would love this shul. Um, there's something very special about shuls that are the only game in town. Um, not that there aren't other synagogues in this area. There are, of course, and we work very closely with them um, and cherish uh, the, the collegiality um, of this neighborhood. But we're the only Orthodox synagogue here. And that means that the people who come to the synagogue, um, they're diverse. It's not like, oh, there's one shul for the Democrats and one shul for the Republicans or one shul for the people in their 70s and one shul for the people in their 20s or one shul for the people with kids and one shul for the people who are empty nesters. Um, no, we're one shul that that brings together this wild diversity of people and and then we all come here to do this kind of joint 
endeavor um, and people who otherwise would have no reason to meet because of their differences in socioeconomic status um, or their differences in, in where they are in life uh, meet here and grow together and challenge each other and learn from each other and have opportunities to do chesed for each other in a way that's that's very special about this synagogue meaning um, our, and because of the, the uniqueness of Lakeview we have this special thing where you really have 20 year olds and and 70 year olds in one synagogue often you'll have you know 20 year olds are living Living in, in cities and urban environments, and then and then the older people are all living in the suburbs. And here we really have that full range, um, which is which is quite quite unique. Um, and it's all one synagogue, and, and everyone's and everyone's together and, and sitting next to each other and getting to know each other. Um, I love about this place that um, it's a place where everyone is striving. It's a place where people are growing in all different directions, coming to Shuri and asking questions. And then the questions are, how can I implement this in my own life? How can I get better at this? And I, I really feel like people are so um, engaged in the Torah that we're teaching. I gave a sermon a few weeks ago, and, and the next day someone sent an email saying, like, I am going to do this thing. How can I do it better? Mm -hmm. um, which is such a it's such a special thing where you see people really growing. Yeah, I, that 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 speaks to me as well. I recently had a conversation with a uh, day school educator who said to me that he could never he can't even imagine how uh, anyone survives as a congregational rabbi because when he teaches uh, his uh, his students, uh, he can see that he is you know influencing them and shaping them, and that's what gives him that sibuk nefesh that that sense of sustenance from him and that professional satisfaction from from feeling he's making a difference in the trajectory the lives of his students, whereas in his mind, uh, you know, people who join uh, congregations as adults have already may answered the big questions for themselves, have already decided how they're going to live their lives, and, and they're nope. not really uh, open to, to any real uh, real evaluation. And uh, you know, I sort of offered my sympathy, you know, with, with that uh, perspective, but it's really not what uh, what I found here at Anshay Shalom, and, and I think that that's a big part of what I love about this community. I... Um, uh, you know, multiple times I've been asked ethical halachic questions pertaining mm. to people's professional lives, and people have mm -hmm. um, people have foregone like substantial financial gain uh, because something that they were contemplating doing or were asked to do was not ethically appropriate or mm -hmm. not halachically appropriate or both. Uh, that that's really admirable. Uh, that somebody once um, scheduled a meeting with me because he wanted some help in apologizing to a friend whom he inadvertently uh, offended. Uh, there are people are are really um, living the Torah here yeah. and taking it seriously and 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 really using it to um, to evaluate their lives and. And, and live their lives in really different ways. And when I think about other communities that I've loved, other um, shuls or yeshivas that that, I, that, I, that arouse that, that feeling of love for me, it's a place where I've grown, where I, I can say, in this building, I learned how to dive. And in this building, I you know, learned how to read a toast photo. And all the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the yearnings and, and the, those feelings of love are, I think, are tied up in the transformation that I've seen in myself in those places. And I, I see this community as a place also where that, those types of transformations uh, take place for people, and that that gives me a lot of a lot of joy, a lot of love, and being mm -hmm. part of this community and working here. And I think that it's a community where people really show up for each other. Like there's there's the whole religious aspect of this community, and then on top of that, there's just the community aspect mm -hmm. of this yeah. community that's unbelievably strong. And I think certainly facilitated and encouraged by Judaism and Jewish values and the Torah that we teach and. Um, and all of that, but but also it's just good people. You know, someone has a baby and and they have meals for months, like overnight. Um, that's a really that's a really special thing. You have all of these professionals who take time out of their busy lives to show up for a bris because there's a new baby born. And what do you do when a new baby's born? You show up to celebrate because there's a new life. Um, and that's that's just a really special thing of people showing up for each other. I think we live, especially you know, kind of everyone imagined that that uh, with the rise of social media, we'd be more connected than ever. And I really think in the world, people are more more isolated and more lonely than ever. And that what our community can stand for and does stand for is a real bulwark against that loneliness. That people come in and they make friends and they feel known by the people around them and, and they identify with the other people here. Um, and, and not always the people you would the most expect them to identify with even. Yeah, you know, yeah. so like, and you learn that, that this interconnectedness, it's essential to, to human flourishing. And we provide a home for that also in a way that's, that's almost like defiantly countercultural. Very much so, very much so. I, I often uh, include that detail when I give uh, tours of the shul to visiting uh, a college class on religious diversity or like the confirmation class at one of the local reform temples. I, I, I often point out that since observant Orthodox Jews don't drive or use transit on Shabbat, most of the people who come to this building on a weekly basis live within a mile of this building. And 
the kind of ripple effects of that social dynamic are mm -hmm. that it enables a kind of social capital and um, socializing amongst neighbors and friends that I think most Americans haven't experienced since the, the 1950s and I think is hugely um, positive in terms of all sorts of social flourishing. Yeah, and the other piece of it is that when people show up here on Shabbat, they're not glued to their phones because nobody has their phone with them on Shabbat. Um, and so you actually are talking to the people around <laughs> you. And it also, meaning sometimes you go to a new space and if you don't know anyone, your phone gives you an out, right? Because you can kind of like stand on the side and, and just like be on Facebook and look really busy. And then, um, and, 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 you know, you don't have to like meet new people. And, and, and because we've kind of eliminated that out for people, you come in and you really, and A, people hopefully welcome you, and, and 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 we also try and be very proactive about about doing that, and 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 B, like you have to engage in in person. Uh, so thank thank you for sharing uh, those, those reflections, and uh, hopefully everyone listening uh, was uh, encouraged to think about the ways that they love their own shuls or this shul or other institutions and people in your life. In the aftermath of this past weekend's attack, I have received, I'm sure you have received, um, countless uh, phone calls and emails and texts from, from friends and from colleagues and from teachers, and uh, it's meant a lot, and uh, eventually perhaps I'll respond to <laughs> some portion of them. Uh, but what's been particularly uh, moving to see are the responses um, online and in person from what I call the Anshay Shalom alumni, people mm. who lived here and have since moved away, and that kind of residual affection and loyalty and love that they feel for this community is uh, is really inspiring. It, it's more than just inspiring. It also, I find it, I find it a little bit intimidating to be uh, in a situation of responsibility for a congregation uh, that means so much to so many people. Uh, I really it's a feel privilege. It, it's a privilege. It's a burden. It's a responsibility that I feel. Uh, but I, but really, just for for this week, I just wanted to. Uh, to thank everyone, uh, wherever you are currently living, uh, whatever your connection to this shul has been in the past, uh, the that the, those feelings of love and that expression of that of that love uh, me means a lot to all of us who work here and all of us who live here. We are very honored to have with us as a special guest on our podcast, Congressman Quigley, representing the Illinois Fifth District and representing Melrose Street. Thank you, Rabbi. It's an honor to be here, uh, even at such a difficult time. So please first tell us about um, your connection to this district. How long have you served in Congress representing this district? Uh, I am in my sixth term. Uh, I replaced, um, you, you may remember, Rahm Emanuel served before me. <laughs> We've uh, heard of him. <laughs> yeah, as he went on to other things. So uh, this, I'm on my 11th year, and uh, I've lived in this neighborhood since 1982. And obviously before that, for 10 years, I served as a county commissioner and then uh, all the years before that, I worked for the local alderman. Oh, okay. So a lo local, local person. Uh, sure. Yeah, deep connection. So thank you for coming in. Uh, we're recording this uh, on, on Monday morning, uh, just a day after we discovered uh, the incendiary devices uh, at the congregation. So I want to thank you for coming in, and uh, I want to give you a chance to send a message to those who are listening to, to the podcast. Before I go to Washington, uh, I wanted to be here and show solidarity uh, just for those listening, the, the, earlier the rabbi said people of good faith must stand together. Uh, obviously, an attack on any place of faith is an attack on all and all who worship there and the entire community. So uh, I, I just want the, those listening to know we stand with you against this extraordinary resilience of hatred. Uh, we must be unified. We must stand together. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm honored to be here. If I can be of any help, please let me know. And now we are going to pivot towards thinking about the future. We are really, really pleased to be able to share with you all an interview that was recorded last week with Erica Phillips, our Vice President for Ways and Means. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. So tell us, first of all, how did you and your family come to Lakeview? What brought you to the shul? What do you love about being part of this community? Sure. So my husband, Donnie, and I are both from the East Coast. We grew up on the East Coast. We met in college on the East Coast. We got married and lived on the East Coast. And we came to Chicago 
for him to attend business school at University of Chicago. And we said, we will leave Manhattan for two years, Mm -hmm. and then we will go back to Manhattan (laughs) to live the rest of our lives. Um, But we pretty quickly fell in love with the city of Chicago. Um, We had our first child during those two years. We joined Anse Shalom. We love Lakeview. And we are going on eight years this summer. Amazing. So it won us over, and now we are likely never going to live in New York again. Okay, well, we're so happy to have you uh, have you here. I, I'm as as a native New Yorker, I'm glad yes. that you made that that transition over to, over to Chicago and Otan Shalom. Uh, tell us a little bit about what it means to be chair of the Ways and Means um, component of our show's leadership. Sure, I've been on the board for a few years, and just this past uh, December took on the role of Ways and Means. Uh, Before that, I was involved in the soiree fundraising event, so this felt like a natural step. Um, Ways and Means is in charge of all of the major campaigns for the shul, so uh, the soiree, the Mishlach Minot appeal, and YKA. Um, I also work on the Soul Cycle event, um, and I'm working to think about how we can think more strategically about our donor stewardship and development uh, throughout the year uh, between these important events. That's a really, really important role. So thank you so much for taking it on. Uh, if there's somebody who wants to be involved in in helping you, aside from donating to the various campaigns, what, what can they do? I would love help. Um, I think... Joining the soiree committee uh, a few years ago was what got me more involved in shul, and I have found it actually a really uh, important way to get involved, and I think myself, my family, we've met more people through it, so I encourage anybody to find a way to be involved, and I'm happy to be the person that you work with. Um, the Soul Cycle event, the soiree, Purim, all of these things have committees of dedicated people who have fun talking about ways to make them better, and so you can join one of those committees, or you can just reach out if you have ideas on how to increase our donor base or how to appreciate our donors um, or how you know we can raise money more effectively at Shul, I'm happy to learn from you and to uh, find a way for you to get involved. Great. So the, the upcoming event uh, on your agenda, on the agenda of the Shul, is the Summer Soiree. It's uh, you know so, so exciting. We couldn't wait until summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, happening in May. And so tell us about it and, and how can people get involved? Uh, is it too late uh, to, to RCP? How can people participate? No, it's not too late. Uh, there are lots of ways to participate. So this year's event is on Thursday, May 30th. It's at the Center on Halstead right here in Lakeview. Um, it's a really fun event. It's really made for anyone in the community to come get to know new people, hang out with people that you already know. It's delicious food by Milt. It's beer and wine. It's a chance to uh, mingle and chat and really a chance to um, honor the shul and also honor our honorees. This year we have some really amazing, well-deserving honorees, Josh Ehrlich and Sarah Unterman, Carly Salinger, and Seth Greenberg, all of which have really um, play, played important roles in our ritual leadership. And so we're really lucky to have them being honored this year. So if you can um, come to the event, tickets are still available. You can go to asbi.org slash soiree. If you can't come or if you want to participate in multiple ways, um, we also do a raffle. Oh, yeah. The raffle prizes here are really great. Yeah, there's the raffle committee. Uh, there's a shout out to the raffle committee. They have uh, gotten over $7,000 of prizes donated. Wow. So they're in six different packages. So whether you're interested in sports or health and beauty or there's a kids package, there's a night on the town with a hotel stay. Mm. Um, raffle tickets are $10. You can also buy them on the website and you don't have to be at the event to win. So you can buy lots of raffle tickets and you can win all the prizes and support Shul while winning those prizes. Are, are Shul employees eligible to win? Yes. Or? Okay, yes, this has been a dispute. So I, okay, okay. Glad to hear that. <laughs> Something that I appreciate about this soiree, and I, I think this is a decision that was made uh, by the committee several years ago and has been upheld each year, is to try to price the tickets in a way that uh, maybe compromises a little bit on how lucrative the evening is for the shul, but really makes it maximally inclusive. And I think it really reflects the kind of like casual, fun, uh, diverse crowd that we see in shul or at Kiddush or at any Anshay event is really reflected at the soiree. It's not like a stuffy... Um, 
benefit dinner that you may have attended or not attended in the past? Yes, it's not a typical shul dinner. And I just want to reiterate that cost should not be an issue for people not coming. If this is something you want to be a part of and the ticket price looks high for you, uh, reach out to the office, reach out to me directly. We can make it work. Um, We are thankful to have uh, members of our community who donate above and beyond the ticket price so that that can be possible. And so there's both ends of the spectrum and we want everybody to be there. That's really great. Thank you. So if somebody wants to meet you, where can they find you in Shul? Um, I generally sit near the playroom on the edge of the women's side. I have three young children, almost two, almost five, and almost seven, and they come and find me after groups, so they would like me to be accessible. So I'm probably usually like eight rows from the back (laughs) on the wall side over there. Fantastic. Thanks so much for coming on to the Straw Hat. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Straw Hat. As ever, we would like to thank our producer, Haley Leventhal, for all the hard work she puts into making this happen. If you have positive feedback, we'll take that in person or by email or phone, however you're feeling. And if you have negative feedback, you should turn that over to the FBI or the Chicago Police Department. They're collecting information about our synagogue all this week. 